Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at ChainTUTS.com. Today we're going to be discussing the scripting side of Segregated Witness, better known as SegWit. This is a really interesting scaling solution that also fixes a couple of other problems that have been historical on the Bitcoin blockchain, and Litecoin has adopted SegWit technology as well. It's important to note that another very popular uh, currency that I talk about a lot, Bitcoin Cash, has opted not to implement SegWit on their blockchain. So none, none of this applies to uh, BCH. So let's take a quick and dirty look at what SegWit is and why it's important to Bitcoin and Litecoin. Well, SegWit is a scaling solution used in these currencies that does a couple of other important things as well. It fixes a thing called transaction malleability, where slight changes in the signature in a transaction used to validate that the sender owns the funds can fundamentally change the transaction ID, which is a unique hash of that transaction data. Fixing transaction malleability allows scaling solutions in the second layer, like the Lightning Network, uh, to work better. Uh, the SegWit solution, since the data included in the UTXOs themselves are smaller, allows uh, smaller computers to run fully validating nodes because less UTXOs have to be stored in memory for processing. And there's also more transactions fit into the same one megabyte block, sort of, uh, with Bitcoin and uh, Litecoin. Uh, because SegWit transactions put some of the transaction data in a separate data structure that's not counted in the same way towards the limit of how many transactions can fit in the block. So it's really important to note that SegWit is a soft fork that's backwards compatible with legacy nodes that don't understand SegWit. This is a bit different than a hard fork that might do something like increase the block size to uh, implement a scaling solution. So when we talk about scripting used to actually uh, construct transactions and validate the owner of the funds uh, that are being sent, let's first talk about traditional pay to public key hash transactions. Uh, please note there's a more in-depth tutorial on how these types of transactions work available on the Chain Tutorials website and a video of course as well. So each transaction contains inputs that have locking conditions set on them. So these are UTXOs that are owned by the uh, address owner. So when the person that previously sent them money sent that transaction, there was this locking condition placed on the funds so that the new owner has to prove they own the funds to use them in a future transaction to send to someone else. So a traditional locking script in a paid to public key hash transaction looks something like this. There's several script operators, and importantly, there is the public key hash featured in this locking condition. In order to unlock the funds and use them in a transaction to send to someone else, the wallet will uh, add something into that transaction called the script sig or unlocking condition. So this features a digital signature and the public key of the address owner. And this proves to the rest of the network uh, that are validating these transactions, whether by a miner or a fully validating node, that this address owner is the rightful owner of that UTXO and is allowed to spend it in this new transaction. Now, what's the difference with a SegWit paid to witness public key hash transaction? Well, they're actually similar in a lot of ways, and there's a couple minor differences that allow this soft fork backward compatibility that I was talking about earlier, as well as this ability to uh, decrease the amount of data required uh, to create one of these transactions and allow the blocks to scale without creating a hard fork block size limit increase. So there's still a locking condition set on the UTXO set to the SegWit compatible address. However, instead of this large piece of data here, you simply have an operator that specifies the SegWit version and the public key hash, which is similar to a legacy transaction. Now, instead of a script sig included in the uh, transaction itself, SegWit segregates the witness, 
that proves ownership of the funds to a new data structure called the witness. So the script seg is actually left empty in a segregated witness transaction. So this witness is actually the same sort of witness that you would see with a traditional transaction containing a signature and a public key. And when a SegWit compatible node validates this transaction, it simply sees this uh, witness sort of script SIG as signature, public key, and op check SIG. Now, how is this backward compatible with legacy nodes? Well, it turns out that this locking condition set, uh, SegWit compatible nodes see that still as a locked puzzle that needs to be solved by the witness in order to validate the transaction. And this works really well as long as there's an economic majority of nodes on the network running SegWits. However, legacy nodes can still uh, validate these transactions by seeing these outputs as anyone can spend outputs. So that's actually sounds kind of dangerous, but it's really not because as long as the majority of the nodes on the network are validating these transactions uh, under the SegWit rules, it's, it's not really a problem. As well, how this works in terms of uh, scaling is that instead of having a one megabyte hard block size limit, there's now something called weight units. So uh, nodes that are running the SegWit rules see the size of SegWit transactions a little differently, where this witness data, since it's moved to a different data structure, counts as less towards the size of the overall transaction. So when SegWit compatible nodes see, see this, they will actually technically allow up to about four megabytes worth of data uh, in a block, but generally in a practical sense, you see blocks with about uh, up to two megabytes worth of data counted towards this one megabyte weight limit um, sort of implementation. It's a little bit complex, but that's generally how it works. And it seems to be working pretty well for Bitcoin and Litecoin. Um, unless the network you know, gets too clogged up like we've seen in the past. So this is an overview of how SegWit scripts work, how they're different and similar from legacy pay to public key hash transactions. As always, there's a written article on the website that accompanies this tutorial. And thank you very much for listening.